Hello my friends and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to compare the Moza R9 with the RS V2 steering wheel with the Camus C12. The R9 I tested is the V2 version and a bit different than the original V1 that I reviewed more than a year ago. The difference between both is that the V2 has a separate RJ port which allows you to plug in the Moza pedals directly into the wheelbase and the V2 is also compatible with the ES steering wheel. The C12 as the R9 received some firmware updates already, but the hardware itself stayed unchanged since my initial review. So when we look at technology, there is already a big difference. I have here the Moza R9, more of a traditional servo motor, which generates nine newton meter of max torque versus the um, uh, servo motor with the external rotor of the Kama C12, which is, generates a constant torque of 12 newton meters with some higher peaks also. Now it would have been more fair um, if I had taken the uh, Moza R12 instead of the Moza R9, but there are two different reasons why I have not. One of them is the R12 is simply not available on the secondhand market here, so I can't buy it. And uh, also the price would go up another 100 euro um, if I would have taken the R12 over the R9. So this is why the comparison is between the R9 and the C12. The R9 also features a more than decent quick release and this is completely absent on the C12. When it comes to build quality, it is a very hard topic. They are both different technologies. I can see both using metal in their casing um, and it all feels very sturdy and, and, and all that. So for the wheelbases, it's very, very hard to judge. I don't see any noticeable problems either with the R9 or with the, R or with the C12, um, some uh, structural problems. Um, so yeah, very hard to, to judge the quality of the wheelbase. Of course, when it comes to the, the steering wheel itself, well, there are some differences. The diameter of the C12 is 30 centimeter and the RSV2 measures a very large 33 centimeter. Both steering wheels feature a similar layout when it comes to the buttons. The difference here is that the omnidirectional joysticks are placed different and the C12 does have four rotary encoders more especially the ones that can be operated by the thumbs are a nice addition. The push buttons on both are programmable light up mechanical ones and they have a nice click to it. The rotary encoders also feel very easy to handle for both. It's really hard to say which set of buttons I prefer. Quality wise they are really neck on neck. Both have also a programmable rough stripe on the top and the C12 has an additional old school LED screen. The shifters on both are made out of carbon fiber and feel very decent and sturdy. And those of the RS V2 steering wheel are slightly adjustable. On top of the shifters, the RS V2 also comes with two dual clutch levers. If there is one thing that really jumps out, the C12 is made out of a smooth four leather fabric and the RSV2 seems to be the genuine Mumu skin. Both feel good to the touch, but the real leather one just feels a tad better. Both steering wheels are also finished with carbon fiber, but the forged carbon fiber of the RSV2 just looks that bit more special. If you look at the software, I think both are very good. Um, a lot of settings can be adapted in them. Um, I would prefer the Moza software uh, over the Kama software because it just looks a bit better aesthetically, but also because um, for perhaps, for example, for the wheelbase, you, you had the different um, settings for Sport and GT and F1 and stuff. Um, you had them available and you also had different uh, um, uh, different preferences um, per 
a tap available. So this is really nice, especially for those that start driving and that don't really have a clue on how the settings sh should be. It's really handy that they included it also in uh, in the bar for, uh, for, for settings. Very, very nice for Moza software. So the straight here, this is the first test. It should intensify towards the end. It does intensify towards the end. I can feel it now getting really, really hard. Beautiful. Here, the second test, the fast corner to the right. It should give me enough power, but also let me feel the details, which it does. Makes me struggle a bit against it. Curbs, it makes you feel well as well. So this is my uh, another test. So here, the long straight, you have to feel the little uh, details here, and here it should it, it should intensify. And here, I feel that the. Um, uh, Perhaps there is, it doesn't have enough power to make you feel it. So on that part, I can really feel a difference between the R9 with its power and other wheelbases um, with a bit more power. For example, I remember the Sim Magic there on that part was very, very good. The T818 um, Trustmaster also very good. So here, yeah. I think the R9 lacked a bit of power. But for the part where there was a, not much detail in the road there, it does it very well. You have a little bit of detail. So yeah, in general, it's a very, very good sensation already. So ACC comparison between the C12 and the R9. The first part of the, uh, of the test is the straight here. Again, here we have details, first light details on this part of the road, and it should intensify, which it does a lot. I would say the feeling of intensity was a bit the same between the R9 and the C12. Now here, this part. Yeah, here it pushes more back the C12. You, and here you can feel that it has more power available. Of course, the curbs, no problem. This part of the track also, the long straight, which should give you a small details here and should get very deep here. Yeah, 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 okay. The, uh, here you can feel the difference of power between both. I could feel the deep part in my bottom going through the rig, the vibrations. Here also light detail, not too much. I would say this is about the same when it comes to the quality and the force uh, between the R9 and the C12. So in general, I would say, um, yes, you do feel the difference of power. And how do you feel it? Well, the intensity. When, when it pushes you away, uh, the side force that you get there is a difference uh, there and also um, with the heights and the loads when it really needs to make you feel um, the difference in level yeah then you are better off with uh, with a bit of a higher force um, force feedback 
which feels nicest? Ha! Huh, I think they both feel equally as nice in ACC. But yeah, there you you have a bit more availability of power. And for some people, I don't know which is the most realistic. The more power, the less power. But I feel that for ACC, because yeah, it is intense, that a bit more power is recommended here. So I think the C12, when it comes to the comparison between the motors, it would uh, it would win over the um, R9. Yeah, I think my my sentiment hasn't changed from uh, from when I started it first uh, driving with the R9 on BMG. Yeah, it's it is a very very nice sensation. It's um I do it's very light. It's also very light to steer, which is normal eh? in the car that I'm driving. It's not a GT car. It should be light, but the R9 it can handle it no problem. You don't have any at any moment, uh, the feeling that you are short of power doesn't happen. It is powerful enough. It gives a very clean and clear force for uh, feedback. Yeah, very, very decent. Only my car would go a bit faster. So I think... I think the difference in power that you have now between the C12 and the R9 is not so visible in a game like BeamNG. I, I think that um, in this game, yeah, it's it's a bit nonsense if you if you go drive this game with a, a 15 newton meter or even 12 newton meter i think is is yeah too much too much for this game it doesn't have the um the really the defined force feedback like you have with a game like acc where you feel like all the the bumps in the track this game it doesn't have that it does for example like i felt with the r9 you have in the concrete roads you have some details which you can feel but well you don't need uh, that heavy wheelbase um, to feel this so the texture in the road it feels the same with the um, R9 as it does with the C12 so the C12 it does feel a bit heavier to drive now even um, when completely toned down because I think I'm running it only at 50 uh, percent but yeah for for driving pleasure um i would rate them about about the same of course there is a difference uh, with the buttons on the steering wheel um which makes it still the, the c12 a bit handier um for no keyboard i for no keyboard usage then with the uh, steering wheel that i have on the r9 that's the difference but for the rest the driving sensation i think r9 c12 it 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 can i it is a bit similar so when it comes to ecosystem well um it is easy said for the c12 we have two different uh, steering wheel rims you have a a bit of a larger diameter round wheel and you have the uh, G more the GT steering wheel. If we look at Moza on the other, ha other hand, they are really the top of the segment when it comes to ecosystem. Um, and I say top for me because uh, I am a regular driver. I like driving normal cars and Moza is actually the only one that really made uh, um, a lot of effort for for those people that just drive with trucks look at the trucking wheel look at the stocks that they have introduced uh, i mean this the the ecosystem of moza is so much more evolved than the one of commerce or than the, the than any other ecosystem out there i really really like it 
uh, for the normal driver that they have such an ecosystem. It's different, of course. If you look at racing uh, ecosystem, well, there you have uh, Fanatec, Sim Magic, um, that are really also also have a very nice ecosystem. But when it comes to a complete ecosystem for racing, uh, but also trucking and, and normal driving of, of normal cars, well, then Moza is the absolute top. Price is the biggest difference between these two wheelbases. The R9 with the RSV2 steering wheel costs 899 euro. Um, if you buy via the uh, Moza website, of course, you can um, buy via retailer, but doesn't change that much. And um, we have for the C12, $549. If you um, count it, I, if you calculate this in euro, it would be 494. So there is a difference of 400 euro between these two packages. The C12 is a brilliant wheelbase and with its 30 centimeter premium feeling round steering wheel, it is a good choice for plenty of drivers out there. And if budget plays a role, this is absolutely the steering wheel for you. But as simulation drivers tend to get more and more spoiled by the bling bling hardware that the various manufacturers spew out, this beautiful piece of hardware might not completely fill your needs. The lack of the quick release and the ability to change the button box is one of those shortcomings. Sure, you can bolt off the round steering wheel of the C12 and put a more sporty GT rim on it, but it's just not the same. I too am guilty of being spoiled too much and I have to admit that even with the C12 being one of my favorite steering wheels out there, if I would have the opportunity to drive around with a smaller Moza truck wheel and indicator stocks on a slightly less performing wheelbase in BMG's career mode, I wouldn't have to think twice. My bank account, on the other hand, might not be so happy about it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had something from this video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. Use affiliate links when you buy new hardware. It helps content creators like myself buy also new hardware. And I will see you all next video. Bye bye.